Hello there YouTube, this is Troy and welcome back to the channel of The Lonely Wolf. Well I'm very excited to introduce my first in a series of Maths Geek series. So today I'm going to talk about the social sciences versus the STEM fields, and particularly the elitist attitude that some people from these fields have. The idea that there's a dichotomy between social and STEM fields. The idea that the natural sciences are the hard sciences, and the social sciences are the so-called soft sciences. I'd like to break down that particular idea because I disagree with it immensely. Before I delve into this topic, let's have a look at the purpose of this particular part of my channel. So firstly, it's to share my appreciation of different academic disciplines, but mainly my focus is on mathematics because it's what I majored in, it's what I do every day, it's what I teach. So as such, I'd like to share some of the major achievements in mathematics, but I want to bring it in a user-friendly way. So in other words, if you'd like to watch my maths videos, no prerequisites are required for this course. So the Lonely Wolf 101 course, no prerequisites at all. I'd also like to dedicate this channel to some parents out there, or perhaps even students out there. I'd like to pinpoint a number of common problems that I've observed in the teaching in mathematics that um, children so struggle with, and common mistakes that are made in mathematics, and how we can fix those mistakes. And I'd like to use that with um, some certain visual aids to help parents um, and to help students come to terms with particular difficulties. So I'll present it in a very different type of way. And also I'm open to requests for particular videos. So if there's a particular area of maths you'd like me to make a video on, or maybe a tutorial one, I'd be happy to do that as well. So firstly, let's have a look at the stereotypes that are involved. So on the left is Maths Geek, resembling from the, resembles the Big Bang Theory. And on the right is the very hippie type person who studied the social sciences, a very nebulous type of person, a free spirit. I think we could juxtapose those two images. As a maths major, I worked with other people who were studying mathematics as well, and I'm going to tell you that most of them look like the woman on the right. I actually look more like the person on the right than I do on the left, to be honest, with the way that I dress. I've also seen social science graduates who've looked more like that person who's on the left. So let's smash this to bits, and let's break down this particular mythology of the dichotomy between these two areas. I'm going to make an argument in this video that the social sciences and the natural sciences, which are often seem to be opposed to each other, are actually the yin and yang. They're closely intertwined and they've both made valuable contributions to human civilization. So firstly before doing that, I just want to make clear what I think in my mind is the purpose of education. So number one, I think there's a vocational pathway there. So first and foremost, I think students are entering university because they're preparing themselves for a particular career path, obviously to provide for themselves and their families financially. But I think there's also a general education. So I believe there's room for 101 type survey courses that are outside somebody's major, just to provide a little bit of um, breadth as well as the depth to their particular knowledge. Now, I'm not saying that we should take up 50% of their course with all these general type subjects, but I'm saying there's room for maybe one or two or three, perhaps, just small survey courses that, they could, that could be chosen from a variety of subjects, just to give an idea of general education, just to add that extra dimension to a person's education. So I believe those are the two purposes of education. So now I'd like to build a model that I hope will convince you that there's a symbiotic relationship between the natural and the social sciences. So let's list some of the, in green, some of the natural sciences, or the so-called hard sciences, as the elitists like to call them. Okay, so within physics and chemistry, I could talk about other things, but my box that I have, the green box, is too small. But we could talk about um, astronomy, um, we could talk about medical sciences, etc. And on the left, we talk about traditionally what are known as the social sciences. And there are so many that it's hard to really list them all in one exhaustive list, so I've probably missed out a lot. So no offence if you're a major and I haven't listed you there. You're still important to me. Now I'm going to put a couple that are in the middle and I'm going to explain why I don't think that these particular areas are going to belong to any particular field. So I don't think statistics belongs in the STEM field. It's not some subset, subset of mathematics. Now even though if you do a major in mathematics like I did, you can specialise in statistics and methodology. And yes, statistics does rely on a lot of mathematics, so there's mathematical tools that have been developed to um, create formulas that are used in statistics. 
statistics is still a discipline in of itself. Okay, so the methodology in statistics is that you would apply to physics experiments or to perhaps medical trials. It has a unique type of um, methodology that goes behind that. It's more of an experimental method methodology. But when we approach the other side, which is the social scientists, so in psychology, it has its own data collection methodology. In sociology, um, there's particular, um, often there'll be a lot of survey type um, data collection, and that has a very specific methodology. So that's why I believe we can't really attach, we can't afford to attach statistics to any one of those particular fields. It belongs in its own category, and it's very flexible. It adapts itself to a number of different areas. But having said that, I think you require a little bit of mathematical background knowledge, um, at least a high school level of mathematics, to be able to understand statistics. Now, philosophy is something that I also think is really attached to each of those particular disciplines in a number of ways, and equally to both sides of this um, kind of, so far, it's a dichotomy, but I'm gonna break that down. All right, so for example, in physics, there's a philosophy. Now, Professor Philip Moriarty has a whole series about the philosophy of physics. And with my own channel, I'm also gonna explore the philosophy of mathematics. But philosophy is also tied, for example, to history. We could talk about the history of Socrates and Aristotle as Greek cultural achievements within the ancient Greek civilizations. Or in education, there's a particular philosophy that goes behind that. And in visual arts, aesthetics is a particular branch of philosophy. Let's have a look at the close links and let's have a look at the symbiotic relationship that exists between all of these disciplines. Now, what would history possibly have to do with mathematics? Well, often the um, archeologists and, and historians, they've uncovered a number of ancient artifacts that date from prehistoric times. But having a precision in the dating that artifact is very difficult. So the mathematicians come in, they've developed um, differential equations. They've used quite a lot of calculus um, using half-life and decay type theory to be able to develop equations that can give us greater precision in dating a particular historical artifact. Geography is also a very interesting discipline. It's not just about looking at people and places, so memorizing places on a map or understanding different cultures throughout the world. It goes much deeper than that, and it's a very robust discipline, and it has a specific lens of its own. It often seeks to solve particular world problems, and they become in a variety of forms. There are both physical types of geography, such as the geomorphology and um, earthquake type disasters, but it also has a very big human element, such as the development of intra infrastructure. As a matter of fact, there could be any world problem we could look at through a geographical lens to try and brainstorm a number of practical solutions. Geography is closely linked to physics in some aspects. So in the physics, geography, in the physics um, side of um, earthquakes, for example, we could look at the seismic patterns, and that relies on the work of physicists. If we're mitigating the effects of natural disasters from earthquakes, the engineers have made a great contribution um, in this particular field. For example, in Japan, the engineers have cleverly designed buildings that are robust enough to stand against the forces of Mother Nature when it comes to earthquakes. But geography goes um, beyond the physics and engineering and also looks at the human aspect behind it. It looks at some of the causes behind some of these problems. It looks at the cost of these problems. So it looks at the economic, political, environmental, and social aspects of any particular problem. It relies a little bit on sociology as well in engineering. So for example, we could consider rebuilding an inner city community um, that might be populated by an ethnic type of minority that's um, particularly prevalent within a community that may require better services, better infrastructure, and a better quality of life. The engineers are instrumental in helping to design the infrastructure and implement that. But the sociologists will look deeper into the problem and they will look at the causes of the inner city decline in particular um, urban areas. They will also have a deeper understanding of the actual culture behind those. Particularly if you're majoring in ethnic studies, you could perhaps be the person who is the bridge between the engineer and the people who are the recipient of improved infrastructure. So the sociologist will understand the people who are behind the problem, the causes of the problem, and they will help brainstorm solutions that are based on the social and economic aspects. So it's a very complicated type of mix. And the engineers are there to do the hard work, I guess, and to provide the infrastructure that's there. Visual arts is very strongly related to computing science. After all, 
the artistry that goes behind gaming also relies on a very rather cold clinical astronomical um, type computing science in which complicated codes have to be developed in which to implement a video game. But there's also mathematics at play as well. After all, um, being able to design a video game, you have to have an awareness of dimensions and a spatial awareness as well. So let's talk a little bit, bit about psychology and education. So psychology, I guess it really helps us to understand what we think of ourselves. So if we have a little bit of a background in psychology, we can perhaps understand how we learn. So students of mathematics or physics or any discipline, they can have a greater insight into the ways in which they learn and they perceive themselves and perhaps they can develop better study habits. Education is also the glue that holds together all of these disciplines. For example, if you're becoming a professor in the physics department, then I think a good grounding in education theory will help you to impart your knowledge in a much better way. But also the development of these communication skills goes beyond just professors and teachers. People who are in the physics, engineering or complicated fields that the general public might not be aware of it takes somebody to be able to communicate the achievements to the general population and disseminate their achievements to everyday people. And that's the value of education and good communication. So now I want to look at self-education. So my own personal perspective is that um, I enjoy um, trying to look for the best possible books that can give me a broad outline of a number of disciplines that I'm not familiar with. So as I've said before, I am a maths major, but the um, what I believe in is expanding my own horizons. So in my leisure time, I do like to engage in other topics that I would normally, wouldn't normally would normally have studied. So for example, a little bit of philosophy, and also have an interest in having a deeper understanding of the history of art. Even if it's a very superficial, broad type of um, knowledge, I still want to have that structure in my mind, just so that when, I, um, when I'm in company and I'm going to a dinner party or a lunch, that I can have better quality conversation and that's really for me that's the process of my education is so I can be a better conversationalist and I can become more of an interesting person to people around me. Now one of the first great sources is a YouTube channel. Alright so no matter what discipline you might study there's always those great introductory channels. Now the Hank and John Green, um, the Vlogbrothers, they are the gold standard in my opinion when it comes to disseminating knowledge to the masses. They present the for their particular knowledge in a very, very user-friendly way with a lot of interesting animations and diagrams and pictures. Very, very one a wonderful channel. I love it. Now, no matter what discipline it is, um, so if you're a social scientist and you want to um, delve into a bit of mathematics, then this is a channel to go to, okay? Or if you're a scientist and you want to have a look at some of the other type of um, sciences, the other disciplines like philosophy or um, even psychology. There's a variety of topics that are covered um, by these brothers as well as their colleagues who work on the channel. But there's also room for perhaps coffee table books. Um, so for me, um, I've got a great one that I have. If I had a coffee table, I'd love to put this art book on it. And what I'd like to do um, in future, I have a number of books that I'm reading at the moment. Now these are just really kind of um, smaller books that provide a very broad survey to everyday people. So they're written by experts in their field, but they're done in a way that really brings them to the great masses as well. Thank you for watching this first video. So I hope, I hope I've um, broken that false mythology between social sciences and STEM fields. I hope I've bridged that little gap and perhaps um, people can appreciate the symbiotic relationship between all these different fields. Now my next Maths Geek video, I'm going to look at the philosophy of mathematics and what philosophy really has to do with mathematics and many more topics are coming on. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. This is The Lonely Wolf. My name is Troy and I'm signing out. Thank you very much for watching.